Hi, you guys. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. By the way, we're almost to 25,000. Yes, my number. Did you know 25,000? So we'll have to do something really big when we hit that number for you guys. I don't know what yet, but I'll start thinking about it if you guys hit the subscribe button. All right. So I am taking a little bit of a downtime. You probably noticed my videos go a little light. I usually do this in the summer, about a three week period because I need to catch up on things because I literally never repeat content, not in the Patreon or out here. And I create custom content for every platform I'm on. So my YouTube content is completely different than my podcast content. And my podcast content is different than my Patreon content. So it's a lot because I don't like put, for example, my podcast content on my YouTube. Well, you know I love my patrons, and they reached out to me this morning and they said, listen, Dana, what is going on with Monique and Chris Samuels? What caused the divorce to finally be filed by Monique? So I had to answer. So you guys know Monique Samuels and Chris Samuels from different places. Chris Samuels was a very successful NFL player. Uh, Monique Samuels was on Real Housewives of Potomac season two through five, and they both appear on Love and Marriage DC season one and two, and I don't know if they're doing a three. I'm trying to learn more about that show. I reached out to Carlos King because he's the producer of it. Uh, and tried to ask him if he would come on the show and teach me all about that franchise and the juicy stuff so I could cover it better. But needless to say, about eight months ago, People Magazine broke a story saying that the, Chris and Monique were getting divorced, that some woman had reached out to them and told them this. And so they were you know, t telling the story from that source's perspective. We never really found out who it was. It wasn't Ashley. Some of the fans thought it was Ashley from Real Housewives of Potomac, but it wasn't. And that was said directly by Monique. So we're thinking everything's great. And then this so happened. People Magazine reported a few days ago that the Montgomery County Family Court confirmed that Monique officially filed for divorce from Samuels despite Monique's attempt to keep the documents private by filing a petition to seal them. Public records indicate that she initially filed a complaint for absolute divorce on April 14th. Later on June 15th, she filed an amended complaint for absolute divorce. So you know one of my t-shirts is no ZC next Tuesday, and that's because I am, and so are my patrons. <laughs> But we love it. Uh, and we wanted to know what was causing all this. Well, there hasn't been any comment really given from Chris and Monique. However, Monique dropped a really telling YouTube a while ago, about eight months ago, on, on her channel, Tea with Monique. But no tea on this. That's weird. No, <laughs> there is tea on this. Okay, so let me play you the key sound bites, okay, because it's very long. And this is what I cared about. Now, I listened to this when this first dropped, but I was like, mm, not ready to cover it yet. It was like, eh, does this even have legs? Let's see. So here's the background on the sound bites I'm about to play you. Eight months ago, People Magazine, People, dropped news that it looked like Monique and Chris were heading towards divorce and separation. And they then dropped this video at saying that's not true. Now, listen carefully to some of the, the hints in this video they drop about their relationship. First, I'm going to play you a sound bite that Chris Samuels addresses why he's lost so much weight. Hey, Chris, people say you lost weight because Monique is stressing you out. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I worked out faithfully, eat right, and I cut back on my drinking, so probably dropped 30 pounds in the last seven months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can tell you lost weight exactly. So tell the truth. Oh, y'all already know. Now y'all know anytime <laughs> somebody said Monique, we are stressed. Um, anytime people are trying to take anything that is involving us, y'all already know we're gonna set the record straight. We done did it before, and here we are once again. Um, so did you want to say anything before? No, no, so basically, um, you know, I didn't know what was going on until Monique filled me in. Uh, the other day and you know it's very disappointing and it's a shame that you know people will put stuff out without fact checking and you know i have my parents you know close 
uh, friends and family reaching out to me and they're upset. They want to know what's going on. And a lot of them didn't even know what we were, you know, going through or whatever. So we just want to set the record straight, let everybody know the truth and tell our story. You know, people are telling our story for us and it's not even, you know, it's not factual. You know, a lot of the stuff is way left field. So we were kind of ambushed by this as well. Yes. So, all right. So I had to write some thoughts down. You know she's going to be prepared. Because y'all know, listen, <laughs> I, had to, I had to get my bullet points together because there's so many things and there's never one way to explain a situation. It's just our way. So everybody want a statement? Here goes a statement. Okay. So it's no secret that Chris and I have been like struggling in some areas of our marriage. Um, anybody who watched Love and Marriage DC last year, y'all saw the argument. Y'all saw all of that was going on. It was just lots of confusion. It was crazy building up to that 10 year mark of our marriage. And, you know, when you've been married that long and you have things that you're just like, listen, I feel like this is this has been unmet or I've been unheard. And it's been the same thing. You start to get frustrated and it's just like, oh, my God, is this how life is going to be? I can't take it anymore. So what y'all saw on Love and Marriage D.C. last season, the first season, it was like my cry for help. It was like I've been saying the same things and he's not hearing me. And I've just had it up to here. So y'all witnessed it on even on RHOP, certain things that I was bothered by or certain things that we had issues with. Y'all saw the same thing on RHOP. One thing about Chris and I is that we've never been afraid to be vulnerable with you all about our marriage. We have been 100 percent. I've been real to the point of I'm putting myself out there knowing I'm going to be judged, but I'm a real person. And this is how I'm navigating my life, my marriage or whatever without any care or shame in the world, I'm giving y'all 100% me. And y'all know that every single time, right? Okay, give it to so, us, Monique. <laughs> um, we've done a great job at being very transparent and honest with everyone. Let's that go. Followed us on social media or watched us on the show, on either show. Um, the fact that people are praising a rumor of divorce or a possible dissolution of a marriage after all of the divorces that have been popping up lately that were actually legally filed and everything else, um, that's sad that people were like praising that there were people out there that were just like excited about it, you know, and then you have a lot of people who love and support Chris and I and our family who were just like devastated um, without further explanation. OK, yeah. so here we go. Finally, geez, the build up and everyone knows when you say the word separation that insinuates the road to divorce. Right. Are Chris and I getting a divorce? No, we're not getting a divorce. Are Chris and I sep going our separate ways, as People Magazine mm. love to state? Monique Samuels and Chris Samuels are going their separate ways. Absolutely not. Nobody ever said that, okay? Um, have we filed a legal separation? <laughs> sure. No. Yeah. Have we filed for divorce? No. Is there any document that proves of any divorce filings? No. no. <laughs> but there is now. <laughs> have we separated to the extent of breaking up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so didn't age well. let me just tell y'all about what was going on as we prepare. All right. So now she's going to talk about how she's preparing for Love and Marriage Season 2. All right. Now. What we were planning to showcase this season on the show was that Chris and I were going through a process. And the process that we were going through was in order to fix our marriage by working on our personal issues. We wanted to take a step back and focus on ourselves. If I'm not good, I'm not good for him or my children. If he's not good, he's not good for himself, me, or the children. So we wanted to take a step back, right? So at the end of the day, if I have some trauma that's undealt with, whether it's involving Chris or not, and vice versa, if we don't deal with it, how is that going to allow our marriage to survive, right? Trauma. So we have multiple homes. We decided that we would spend some nights apart so we can give each other space. While we're on our counseling journeys, he's in counseling, I'm in counseling, we're focusing on ourselves. Um, Y'all be seeing me posting about my prayer and my praying and my meditating and everything else. Uh, we've been eating right. We've been actually and cutting down on our drinking. Just throw that back in there. That's right. We've been actually communicating a lot better than we have in a very long time. So we wanted to focus on just like our children being great parents for them, which actually allowed us to be way more present with them because it took the um, the pressure of us. Fix the marriage, fix the marriage, fix the marriage. We said, you know what? We're going back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics, right? So we're uh, most definitely still together. Um, we haven't given up on our marriage and we didn't break up and we're not looking to divorce. So at least eight months ago, Monique and her husband, Chris, were separated. 
they weren't legally separated, but they were separated. They lived in two different houses. They were dating each other. They were going through counseling. There was some sort of trauma in their relationship. Obviously that it had something to do with maybe, um, you know, not being healthy, maybe not, you know, get talking about problems, maybe drinking too much, which can cause bad behavior or, you know, whatever, right? You get the drift. Things aren't great in the Samuels household because they're going in this moment their separate ways, even though they're downplaying it. So we're simply trying to be better. So we basically said, screw all the fussing and fighting. Um, let's go back to the beginning, fix ourselves on an individual level, self-love, all of that good stuff. Then work on our friendship so we can reestablish that. And then um, focus on what we both want for our marriage. So we've been talking at each other for so long that we needed a change that would work for us. Okay. So what we're doing wasn't like a great example for our children. We're looking at our kids. We're, we're like going through, sometimes we're barely, right. We're barely affectionate. Like we were not like connecting like we should be in how we used to. And we're like, I think this is how love and marriage is supposed to be. Right. So this allowed us a chance to like rediscover who we were and give each other space while doing that. Um, we explained this, everything that we're telling y'all right now, um, Chris looks football serious. No, no, <laughs> I just thought it was hilarious. It was, um, the funny thing about it is, through this whole process of what's been going on the last day or so, we kind of laughing at it. We all like, there seriously. Us laughing. Yeah, like really, like it's not even phasing me like that. For real. Yes, so um, everything that we're telling y'all right now is exactly what we told production. It's exactly what we told Cass. Um, it's the same conversation that I had even with Ashley. Because uh, a lot of people are trying to throw Ashley under the bus. Ashley is innocent. Leave her alone. She did not start this stuff. People Magazine got a call from some woman and took it and ran with it. So we'll get to that in a second. So um, we explained all of this to uh, production. Just put my Lolita glasses on for a second. People Magazine is a tabloid, but they don't just run any story. They have to really believe the source. And this source was not a cast member, or they would have mentioned it. So who is this quote unquote, some woman calling people and what would her motive be? And this makes me think that maybe something was happening with Chris Samuels on the side. I don't know this, I'm speculating, but it seems fishy to me. And why did people believe this woman who spilled this tea eight months ago before anybody else knew? Hmm? Maybe somebody who wanted it to be true. Okay, so one of the things I sensed as I listened to this is Chris Samuels is more committed to this relationship than Monique in the sense that it seems like she's the one who's the most unhappy and maybe Chris is the one that needs to do the work, just saying. Um, I would. I wonder if the woman who called People Magazine wasn't someone who had her eyes on potentially Chris Samuels. It's possible, otherwise who would leak that? I don't know. That's kind of weird. But needless to say, I'd say that the separation suited them in their two houses. Maybe one of them met someone and so, you know, they didn't want to go back together again. They liked the new person better. That's very possible. And it seemed to me Monique was really unhappy. This was a very political conversation. And this is only eight months ago. So we already know they, they were separated eight months ago. The divorce seems like it was just a technicality because they couldn't improve the relationship. And they weren't even hooking up. I mean, did you hear that? Like, that's the end. I'm sorry. The dating didn't work, obviously. I'm sure they met somebody else. I, I'm sure they have a love interest, one of them or both of them, from being separated. I'd say that's what Egg did on a little okay, bit. Okay, last part. This is Chris Samuels talking about how bad he really needs to work on himself. And I think, again, Chris wasn't maybe giving Monique the attention that she needed because he was going through a lot with his NFL career. And that maybe caused the demise of this relationship. Let me play it for you. But I will say we're in a great place and we haven't been in this place in a long time. After we made love, let me clean it up. I think no, I'm rubbing off for you. we yeah, make love, yeah. we just fucking. I, 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 don't see all that, girl. I'm sorry. Yeah, for <laughs> man. 
<laughs> we was. It was. It was necessary. I mean, it, 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 it was, was necessary. Yeah, we it, went a couple it months. Was backed up. But it at, was backed up. But, but at time. the end of the day, I told Moni. I said I felt real good because I haven't been able to cuddle, cuddle with her and hold her that way in a long time. The way she looked at me early that day. <laughs> No, I said it felt like See how bad things were. And, yeah. and it felt great. And I shared that with Mona. Ten years. We haven't had I mean, that in a minute. So, you have um, to work hard at it. This whole process of what we're doing, you know, I'm basically working on myself. And this is something that Monique has been trying to get me to do for the longest. But for the long time, I was just like, ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. You know? And it wasn't until I went down to Florida herself. and I went to this conference and it was other retired athletes in the room. And they were speaking in life and everything Purpose, else. Life. And they also spoke to us about remember who the F you are. And they was like, you achieved something that most people can't achieve. You know, the discipline, the hard work, everything from four years old up to make it to the NFL. You worked at it, you worked at it, you worked at it. Now that you're retired, wake up, find your purpose and your passion. And if you're not good at something, whether it's real estate you're trying to get into, some type of field, whatever, if you're poor in computer skills, go take a computer class. When you were four years old working on that football technique, you worked at it and you would run through a brick wall for it. So basically, it was like, remember who the F you are. And for the longest, I was just kind of floating through life in retirement and didn't understand why I wasn't passionate about anything. And it wasn't until they spoke to me and it hit me. Basically, the whole thing, my whole life, I worked to play in the NFL and I was so passionate about running out of that tunnel, playing in front of all of those people, you know, the excitement of the game. And it wasn't until you are. wake up, everything is already in you. Greatness is in you. And literally, it changed my whole outlook on life. I was a good dad. I felt like I was a good husband, but I wasn't passionate. I wasn't going above and beyond. Right. It was a lot of things that Moni kept telling me, Chris, create this, create that. Date nights, do this, do that. Like, I'm doing all of the work. Right. And it felt like I was holding the weight of the was. marriage, the children, I put way too much the household. On and when y'all saw me on Love and Marriage DC last season, she was I, was, I was at my wits end. I was so tapped out. I was so just overwhelmed. Um, and then when you're filming reality TV, add that into the mix. It was too much. And um, and, and and he just wasn't hearing me. Right. So, 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 so yeah. let me finish. So basically, after I left that conference, literally changed my life. My attitude about life, I feel like it saved my life. When I talk to my kids, it's not just a quick, yeah, 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 in one ear and out the other. No, I'm in depth with the conversations. Quick, yeah, 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 in one ear and out the other. No, I'm in depth with the conversations. A lot of times when I would pray with my kids, when I put them to sleep, Lord, protect them, da-da-da-da. No, now I'm praying with passion over my kids. I'm praying for their future. I'm praying for, you know, the, the, their spouses, their kids, leadership, protection, and everything else. What the, um, I prayed with Moni. And I told Moni straight up, I'm going to be real with y'all. A lot of people came down on Moni about this last season. And it was just some intense moments, some things I didn't like. I'll be honest with you, but it was the truth. And when I prayed with Moni, I told her, I said, Lord, thank you for a strong woman that held me down when I was asleep for 12 years. Literally, not 12, 12 years. years. And that was after I retired. Was 12 me. years. Stop it, girl. <laughs> but no, seriously, I said, Lord, thank you. Lord. When God says he gives you a helpmate, he gave me the perfect helpmate. Because literally when I was in sleep mode, not passionate about anything, and I put a stamp on everything of what I provided, that wasn't what she wanted. The she money. wanted me. She wanted vulnerability. She wanted me to talk to her in depth. Intimate she wanted, conversation. Right. She wanted equal partnership, not the money. She wanted me to put input into the family. And I love my family. I love them the way I thought they should be loved. But at the end of the day, it wasn't until I went down to Florida. Shout out to Caleb on it. It, like Caleb literally set this whole thing up and I won't give his whole story. Bottom line takeaway, Chris was not giving his all. He wasn't present with the family and the kids and Monique and they weren't having sex and they were barely talking as friends and he had lost his passion for life. He thought he had kind of made his money and done his thing, but then he was like, shit, I'm so young. Now what? What do I do? And am I a loser now that I'm not in the NFL because I derive so much of my identity from it? And he had his own little identity crisis. And they were together for like 12 years and married for 10. And, you know, at that point, you get sick of each other's idiosyncrasies. And Monique was looking for something more. And she's beautiful and hot and young and rich because she's going to get a percentage of whatever they built together over the last 10 years. But she also, 
you know, probably wants to have a partnership with someone who's going to be checked in and was tired of doing the whole thing by herself. Maybe, you know, unfortunately, Chris, you know, was really doing great when he got off the high of this self-help thing for NFL players, but then it like fizzled out and he kind of went back to his normal routine and Monique had drawn a line in the sand. And I'm sure she didn't want her kids to find out through People Magazine. So I think this time she controlled it a lot better. And that's that. So that's what happened with Monique and Chris Samuels. Now, Monique Samuels was careful to say that reality TV helped her marriage and didn't hurt it, but that's because she wants to keep her job. I'll tell you right now, there's no way that the reality TV show didn't upset this even further because number one, it makes people who are your fans hit on you left and right out when you're in the you know wild. Number two, you have a tendency to look back on your video coverage and be like, oh my goodness. And if one of your partners isn't supportive to the show, you get upset. And if the other partner is jealous of all the attention you're getting while you're on the show and they don't have anything else going on at the moment and they only derive their personality from like their achievements and they're not used to not having all the accolades go to them, then I'd say it's pretty straining on the relationship. That's just my thoughts though. All right, guys, I'll try to do another video. Bear with me. Big kiss.